You say, no, we have to invest in, in things that we're going to clean up the air, clean up the rivers, uh, and so on and so forth. The issue about how China uh, is going to deal with green energy and uh, adjusting the economy is a very big, big uh, question. And now with the new five-year plan, he's putting an emphasis on green growth and developing new technologies, new energy. He's having an enormous impact, positive impact. I think green is critical, and the, you know the, the the early industrializing countries in the West, and in then Japan, and then in industrial East Asia, Japan and the Four Tigers, all industrialized very rapid. Well, East Asia in particular rapidly, but in the West they took a long time. But they polluted their environments. They did not pay attention to the environment, and then later they said, "We're killing ourselves." we have to clean up our environment and we have to have green sustainable development so they're very well of their aware of that now and it's expensive you have to clean up the mess you made and then you have to use possibly more expensive means to continue your economic development it would be cheaper to just throw stuff in the river pollute the air you said no we have to invest in in things that we're going to clean up the air clean up the rivers uh, and so on and so forth so I think, again, it's very wise for President Xi and, and your government to pay attention to that. Well, I think the, the, the entire conference was talking about green in a very deep and sophisticated way. Green refers to the fact that we now live in a planet with 7 billion people and that there are far more people than our society can support on this planet. So all nations are beginning to get very conscious about their need to uh, think about their use of resources and their use of precious things like air and water. So I think it's, it's fitting and appropriate that the new president includes this as one of his central ideas. I think that means the next five-year program, the 13th from next year, will be more about implementing effective policies because still China's cities have poor air quality, water is a problem, and China's environment is still having a heavy burden from rapid industrialization. So because this impacts on people's living and well-being, so it's very important that they feel the environment is being paid attention to. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, coming from Denmark, uh, admire China for is uh, the implementation. Uh, sometimes it's uh, relatively easy to make long-term plans on what to do on the energy supply and what to do in the environment and so on. But very often it's the hard time is the implementation to, to bring it into the, the, to the world and bring it into reality from having the plans. And this is where I see that you are very efficient and very good in China to do this. Uh, so I very much appreciate that you are also looking this uh, way towards renewable energy and, and, and decreasing the uh, dependency on imports of oil and so on. And I am very confident uh, the approach you have because I think you are very efficient in the implementation of your goals. Um, and and so, uh, I mean, what the bad side of China's development has been the way it had disregard for the environment. The good side of Chinese development is that the Chinese leadership seem very determined to change that situation, recognize the crucial importance of global warming, and recognize that something needs to be done about it. And you can see this in the way in which they promoted the solar power solar panel industry, uh, um, wind turbines, uh, electric cars, electric scooters and so on. The issue about how China uh, is going to deal with green energy and uh, adjusting the economy is a very big, big uh, question. The, from my point of view, and I think uh, many other people's point of view, the biggest global problem is a coordination problem or a, an assurance problem that China, if China is going to uh, advance its green energy 
policies that other countries also do so. It fits more broadly with the idea that a, a green uh, priority in the economy is not, is, can be a positive win-win opportunity for everyone. In fact, the fact that China, under the new five-year plan now, is putting an emphasis on green growth and developing new technologies, new energy, is having an, an enormous impact, positive impact. In fact, it's both the fact that China did all this and the US came on board that made the COP21 possible. And so I think China is having a, a, an enormous role in developing of wind energy, uh, sun energy, uh, and all kind of new energies. Uh, there's also a lot of efficiency gains that can be uh, obtained in China. What's good is that it's, um, it's good for the world, but it's also what the Chinese public is expecting, you know, because it's solving both global climate and issues of pollution at home. Uh, so I think the emphasis is right. What China is planning to do under the new plan, next five-year plan, is really a milestone, not just for China, but for the world. Okay? So as you know, China is aiming to have blue skies and blue water as part of its strategy. And, you know, it is extremely important to recognize that China is putting and plans to put an effort behind that, which very, very few countries can do. So, for example, China plans to spend 3% of GDP every year in cleaning up its water and in cleaning up its air. Okay? That is the amount of money they are planning to spend on cleaning up its infrastructure. It is larger than what Brazil spends on all of its infrastructure in a, in a year. So the, the, the ambition with which China is approaching this is very important. But you know, as you know by looking at the sky here, etc., it is much needed. And it is, it is very important not just for China, but because it's also very important for the planet. So by doing this, China is making a big contribution to the world, but it's also making a big contribution to the future generations of young people here in China.